Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Identity Insights by Indicio. I'm your host, Tim Spring, and today we are joined by Indicio's Deputy CTO, Sam Curran, for the third and final day uh, wrap-up of Internet Identity Workshop. Thanks for joining us, Sam. How's your day been so far? It's been pretty good. Uh, at the end of the conference, it's uh, everyone's tired but happy, and uh, it's, it's pretty great. So I come to you live from the San Jose airport as we're uh, <laughs> headed home. Incredible. Um, well, yeah, what uh, what was kind of the big happenings events uh, of today? So a couple of good meetings. So the third day is uh, is a little bit lower. The um, There's a few less attendees. Most folks are still there, but there's a few less attendees. And so um, that uh, that kind of affects the day a little bit. It's a little bit more relaxed. Um, and to squish in the same number of sessions, they like work over lunch. So like everyone grabs lunch and then sits down and talks about stuff. So um, that's how we slide that session in. But um, uh, I attended, um, there's a number of good ones. Um, there's one discussing um, the, the concept of uh, data sharing attachments or agreements um, to credential exchange to apply or provide a technical mechanism for enforcement of laws. So if you agree that they can't use it for a certain purpose or they have to delete it in a certain time frame during the actual information exchange there, um, then that's that's really powerful. So that that was a good uh, conversation. Um, there was a, quite a spicy conversation that Daniel Bloom was in about OpenID for VC interop profiles. And there are the protocol has a variety of profiles of use. And let me explain a little bit what a profile is. There's specs. Um, that define typically a wide array of options for its use. And the reason why they tend to go a little bit wide is because um, it's really hard to come back and visit the specification. But a really wide open spec leaves kind of too many variables to guarantee interoperability for a particular use case. So what people do is they produce a profile on the spec that narrows the options. So rather than all the, the options that the, that the spec allows, it narrows it down to a more specific um set of of options and that is a better target for 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 interoperability in multiple organizations like trying to make things actually work together um it's actually a great pattern um it's used all over the place uh, you know aries has been doing it for a long time but we weren't the first people there's a lot of people that are focusing on interop profiles as a way to make that happen so what's happened is is there's a set naturally of interop profiles for the open id for vc and there's discussions about trying to uh, have fewer profiles so that there's broader interoperability. And um, and there was a uh, a lot of discussion in that session about the credential types that people wanted to use that happen to be in their profiles, but other, uh, not other ones. There's high assurance profiles. There's opinions about whether did should be used or not, which is really interesting. Um, and about how the governance and, and, and approved issuer, you know, stuff comes about. Um, and so there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff um, that kind of comes out during those discussions because you're getting into the nitty gritty instead of the overall structure of the spec, you're getting into the nitty gritty individual choices that that like matter for the implementation. And so, um, and so that's pretty important. Anyway, so that was a really good discussion. Uh, I'm curious, um, real quick before we move on. Uh, sure. I always thought that DIDs were kind of central to decentralized identity. Could you break down how it would work without DIDs? Poorly. That is my opinion. <laughs> okay. So there's some arguments that like uh, leaning on existing infrastructure or like, for example, in the, in the EIDIS uh, world in the European Union, they, they have a X5, X509 certificate structure that they designed. And so there's some attempts to use that or to just use keys and not have any sort of identifier outside the keys at all. That pr pr uh, presents some problems with like key rotation and things, but there are arguments about whether you need key rotation and stuff. And so... IW is a workshop to highlight that. And so these are the types of, of things where you get together and you discuss all these items to try and figure out the right way to make it happen. So none of what I'm saying is final. These are just, the, of course, the discussions that are happening. I assert, like this is opinion of Sam here, that the the did core spec is a, is a really powerful identity uh, or identifier meta system. And that Anytime you need uh, future forward flexibility or the uh, the ability to adopt newer technologies in the future, you're going to need a meta system to allow that to happen. I argue that if you don't use the did core spec in some manner, you're going to end up reinventing it. And I'm a big fan of not reinventing it. We should just use the one that we've got. 
because I think it, it gives us what we need for a very long time. Uh, it's not perfect, but it gives us that structure that's common in this general, and it serves as the abstraction layer that you need between how everyone thinks about or refers to identifiers, and then the actual details of the identifiers themselves. It's deeply technical, but I agree with you. Did need to be core to this, and that's kind of at the heart of this discussion about whether they actually should be or in what manner they should be. So yeah. I'm relatively opinionated about this particular topic. <laughs> No, I can for sure tell. Uh, sorry, I was just confused by that point. So uh, I'll. Uh, what no, else? Happened? That's an ex excellent question, and I'm glad glad we had this talk, Tim. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, uh, I held a session on did method enumeration. I've identified four places where uh, different specs and things where um, we need to have one party describe to another party the the did method they support. And this is key because there's a lot of did methods and no one expects everyone to in implement all of the did methods. And it's really important to coordinate between parties so that they're capable of using all of the same dids for the same parties that are involved in an ecosystem, right? And so I had this idea pre-IW and talked with a few uh, folks and put some ideas together. And then uh, we held a session and it was fantastic. There was great discussion um, and really opened uh, my, uh, really opened up the concept to uh, a number of other things that ought to be sort of specified in a minimal spec that this is designed to be. So this is work that's, uh, that's at the Decentralized Identity Foundation. It's currently called did method enumeration, although it needs a name because we expanded the scope a little bit of a name change because we need a, we expanded the scope a little bit during the, um, during the conversation. So um, there's some additional stuff and I need to get some details um, into the GitHub repo to, to help us track the issues that we talked about. Um, but, but did method enumeration was the name of the session and the name of the spec. Um, and that's, uh, that's going to have some improvement. Um, so really good there. Um, there was uh, a session about uh, learning things at, at uh, in Bhutan. Uh, they have a really cool uh, identity infrastructure and things that, that's going on. Um, and uh, they talked about different formats. Uh, Bhutan is one of the places that has deployed a non-creds to great success. And there's also been great success in, in, in the British uh, Canadian um, uh, uh, government uh, with it on creds as well. And so there's lots of different sort of, uh, most commonly talked about credential types of the moment. Um, but it was, it was cool to hear about, you know, production deployments of, of credentials in, in those environments. That, that was pretty neat. Um, nice. so did you learn anything new from their deployments that you kind of took away from those? Settings? That was a Ken, that was a Ken comment. So I wasn't uh, in that one. Uh, um, but, uh, but, but no, it's, it, uh, There'll be there'll be more in the news about this, uh, you know, as the project progresses. But the whole country is super big into digital identity, um, and they understand it, and and they're implementing it quite well. And so there there'll be more over over the over the next bit uh, about that, um, just in, in what they're doing and how cool it is, which is which is pretty neat. Um, so the other thing that I want to share, which is pretty fun, is is that um, is that at the end of IW every day. We report out on all the sessions and then there's time for people to be able to make any comments or observations generally about the conference. And then there's a section called open gifting. And what this means is that the conference purchases gifts of, you know, chocolates and candy and, 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 uh, and, and whatever. And it's in the middle of the floor and anyone gets to walk up and give a gift to anyone else for something cool that they did, either in the community or in the conference. Um, and so that happens at the end of every day. We unfortunately had to leave to make it here to the airport uh, before that happened. Uh, but Daniel Bloom, one of our NDCO team members, was there and was called out by Stephen Curran, uh, a community member, for his his excellent contributions to the community. So that was pretty cool. Um, there was a, in this case, a book that we should recognize, an, an O'Reilly book about nice. learning digital identity uh, that uh, that he picked up as the gift. You often go up and kind of pick the gift that best suits you. Um, sometimes people are traveling or they they either do or don't drink alcohol or something. And so anyway, you just you yeah. kind of select a gift. And so Daniel was recognized for his excellent contributions. And I must highlight that his uh, his efforts. Um, he held a session. I forgot to mention this. He held a session today on did pure four and, and, and to update on the concept and kind of what's going on and explain that had a great session with a bunch of people and, um, and uh, his work, both with did pure four, as well as uh, the did demo that we saw yesterday or, or the, the first day that I demoed uh, at demo.didcom.org. If you want to do a self-guided demo of the technology, it's a developer focused demo. And so there's a bunch of, bunch of technical details showing on purpose. Um, but 
uh, Daniel's contributions have really made uh, all this pretty darn excellent. So I think it was excellent for him to be called out as a, and thanked for his contributions to the community. Nice. Uh, that's super exciting. And I love uh, the the book, obviously, Learning Digital Identity. You'd hope you'd already know quite a bit about it, but. Uh, Absolutely. But, but it's, really nice, it's nice to hear stuff and, and, and read stuff and everything else. And of course, have the opportunity to share that around. So that's pretty good. Absolutely. Um, so I know you've got a flight to catch soon, so I've just got one quick more question for you, which is, I know there's obviously, right, uh, side conversations, hallway conversations. I'm wondering if you ran into anyone in the hallway and discussed something that you just found particularly interesting today. Uh, so after Daniel's session, uh, a number of us were were gathered just sort of standing and talking afterwards, um, and we talked about um, uh, techniques for man in the middle detection with with the various technologies involved in the SSI space and the, and the ability to present a a proof or to present a, uh, you know, uh, uh, the proof of a credential, uh, or a, the, sorry, the presentation of the cred uh, of a digital credential from a trusted issuer across a presentation that's bound to the communication channel as, a, as an excellent mechanism to do that. And so there needs to be some more writing and demonstration of that concept um, and uh, as, as a mechanism for man in the middle detection and, and some of the communication stuff going on. Um, and so that's going to be something cool coming out. And that was just kind of a unofficial conversation after a thing where there was some questions asked about how does it, you know, how does, um, uh, you know, how does this approach compare to certificate authorities and, and some other things? And so it was a, it was a fantastic conversation. One of the ones I really enjoyed. It was only about 10 minutes long, but many of the amazing, you know, conversations don't have to really be long to, to be amazing. Of course. No, as long as you get some good ideas out of it. And it sounds like you definitely have some good ideas and potentially some action uh, to be taken from as well. Yeah. So it was, it was very cool. It's something we've known about for a long time, but I think we're actually in a situation where we can act on it relatively rapidly to, to make that a powerful thing. Nice. Um, well, awesome. I think we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you for joining us, Sam, from the airport. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you at home are interested in learning more about verifiable credential technology, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll continue to bring you some more educational content or updates from the community. And Sam, if you could leave us with maybe three key takeaways uh, from the conference or just three things you're excited to work on more and see how they grow. Uh, I'll offer a couple of thoughts. Um... So there's a lot of discussion about open ID for VCs here. There's definitely some work to do there to sort of stabilize that and make it uh, more usable, um, both um, with adding technologies that um, that help uh, support the open ID for VC specs in areas that they don't uh, that are out of scope for their operation, um, and figuring out the interoperability profiles uh, stuff is really cool. Um, I think there we I had a session that I talked about yesterday about how Didcom can help support the protocol in some of the areas that are out of scope, but are definitely necessary for business applications and good user experience. Um, and then um, I'm excited to uh, this has given me a lot of fire. I love the 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 Didcom demo stuff that we we got to do, and i'm I'm excited to sort of push within those communities to advance some of the open ID for VCI support stuff that we talked about, but as well as sort of just rounding out the documentation and the demos and things. I think we're getting to a, a point where it's it's a lot easier to sort of pick up and learn this stuff. Um, and i'm I'm pretty excited about that. There were there's some exciting demos. Oh, there's a cool demo um, by by one of our uh, one of the Canadian attendees that ran Acapi on a Raspberry Pi, so Acapi get it with a PI, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, and that that was a really cool demo, um, and uh, and and he had fun in a session. So there's some there's some pretty cool stuff going on, and and I'm kind of excited to see what comes along. IW is great because it lets you have some really detailed conversations uh, with with some really excellent folks. Um, but but most of the work doesn't happen at IW. The conversations happen there, and it's the time in between the conference where the real work gets done, and then we're able to revisit and advance things in a really meaningful way. Um, and then uh, and then of course we'll have another one uh, in the spring where we where we kind of talk about the progress we've made on those technical things, and uh, and to see where we where we made it to. Yeah.